so in the previous video uh, we have seen that uh, how to you know uh, just understand the control flow and the time and space complexity analysis of uh, single branch recursive code so when i say single branch recursive code what do i mean by that so let's say uh, you talk about finding factorials so when you are trying to let's say find factorial of 5 then this particular function called just one function right so fact of 5 just called fact of 4 similarly fact of 4 also just called fact of 3 what i mean by this statement is let's say there is a function f so this function f is invoking just one more function which is f dash it is never so happening that a function f is invoking f dash also as well as another function called as g dash also so let's take an example over here it is never so happening that fact of 5 for some reason is calling fact of 4 and fact of 6 it's never happening so such kind of you know uh, recursive chain recursive uh, calls that have been made is a single branch recursion right so it is pretty easy to analyze you just start from top you go till the bottom and then you return uh, as and when needed right so this is very easy to understand so now we are going to take example of a multi-branch recursive code so to start with a uh, two branch recursive code where a function will be invoking two different functions okay so i am going to do one thing i am going to uh, draw a code snippet over here okay so just look at this code snippet so there is a function which takes in an integer and it returns nothing okay and here is the piece of code written so first thing it does is it prints the value of x okay and then it checks if x is greater than or equal to 3 in this case it is going to return so what is the meaning of return semicolon for a void function so ideally a void function should not have a return statement it should not return anything right but return semicolon is uh, as good as writing exit so it simply means to say that hey now you should exit right so yeah and then uh, i have a function called func x plus 1 and then after this i have func of x plus 2 this is what i have now what i want you guys to do is take a look at this code and pause this video for at least two to five minutes as long as needed and then you predict what should be the output of this code if the initial call has been made from main function and main function has invoked it for func of zero okay so you have this function definition you know the initial call okay and now you on your own take your pen and paper and just take some time out to detect the expected output of this code and then uh, you should also uh, try to run this on your computer system and try to match if your expected output is matching the actual output or not okay so let's everyone do that before i explain it to you okay so now let us all understand that what should be the output over here see the basic rule of thumb in understanding control flow of any code that you have written is that it is a you know the code is going to get executed line by line right so until unless this statement is executed is it possible that this gets executed no similarly until unless this is executed this will not execute so it will get executed in a sequential fashion right and that is exactly uh, something that happens with recursive code as well it is no exception to that okay so let us take an example let us make the first function call which is for func of 0 i'm going to denote it by f of 0 okay so what this f of 0 is going to do let us start doing that from here so you call for x equals to 0 the first thing that you should do is to print the value of x which is 0 right now so i think this should have been very easy to guess i'm going to just write it like this that here it printed this thing and then it moved ahead okay now will this if condition be true for x equals to 0 no this won't be true right so this statement will be uh, skipped and then it will come over here 
Now what will happen? It will make a call to f of 0 plus 1, which is f of 1. Okay. Now when f of 1 has been called, then the control will pass over to f of 1. So now the control no longer resides at f of 0. Right. So what will happen once this function gets over, once this exits from the system, then only the control will come back to this and when control comes back to f of 0, then it will make call to this f of 0 plus 2. So uh, in order to not forget f of 2, what I am going to do is I am going to create a branch f of 2 over here and I am going to put this on hold. I'm going to just put this thing on hold. Now you see this entire thing thing is going to look like a recursion tree, okay? Where all of these function calls are nothing but nodes, nodes of the tree, and every node explodes. And when it explodes, it either does something or it makes call to some other function, okay? But the rule of thumb is that this will not get executed until unless this has got executed. So whatever executes first comes early and whatever executes last comes latest. If let's say there were three calls, f of x plus one, x plus two and x plus three, then I had f of one here, f of two here and f of three here, right? So that is the order which I'm going to follow. And this is a very classy way to uh, detect the output of any recursive code snippet. So understand it very, very clearly, okay? So now what will happen? f of one will start executing, right? And why I have f of 2 waiting over here? Because the codes are executed sequentially, right? And uh, if I don't put it over here, it might so happen that once I'm done with this and I come back to the parent, I might forget this thing that this even existed. That is the reason I'm putting it somewhere for my memory to uh, not falter and take one from there. Okay, so now f of 1 has been invoked. So what will happen? f of 1 will first print the value that is 1, right? Now, will this condition be true? No, this condition won't be true. So now it will come to f of 1 plus 1, which is nothing but f of 2. And now, until unless this has got executed, this will not start, right? So what will happen? That this f of 3 will be kept on hold. So now you, do, now you do see this thing clearly that this f of 2, which was earlier waiting for f of 1, is now waiting for f of 3 as well as f of and f of 2 is wait and f of 3 is waiting for f of 2 right so this is how it happens whatever is last in that is first out okay so now when you come to f of 2 what is going to happen so again the first thing it will do is to print the value 2 this condition will be false for x equals to 2 and then it will make call of f of 3 and then here it will make call of f of 4 right so see, this is how it is happening. So, you know, if you take a look at this entire thing, which is going to, you know, get seen over here, it is just the output, which I'm going to see if I had made a function call for func of one. So this is a subtree within this entire big tree. Okay. And every subtree, which is rooted at a particular function call, denotes the output of the recursive code if the recursion had been initiated with that particular value of x, right? So this is the thing over here. So now again, yeah, coming back. So now f of 3 is going to execute. So f of 3, first thing it will do is print the value 3. And now will this condition be true? Will it be true? Yes, it will be true. So what will happen? It will return. What does return mean? Return simply means that this function will now exit. The moment it exits, where will the control go? So whether a function returns something or exits something, the control passes on to its parent. And what is the parent? Parent is this. Now what will happen at f of 2? f of 2 will now. So imagine there was an f of 2 that printed this value 2 that underwent this check that made a call for f of 3 which just exited. So now it should do f of 4 and I have this f of 4 over here, right? So I have not forgotten it. So now you come at f of 4. f of 4 will kick in. It will print the value of 4. And then this condition will be true for it. Right? So this will also exit. Now once this exits, what happens? Again, the control passes on to the parent. And parent is f of 2. Now what happened for f of 2? f of 2 executed all its statements. 
So if a function has finished executing all its statements, what does it do? It simply exits, right? So sen since it exits, what will happen? The control now will flow back to its parent, which is nothing but f of 1. And now what f of 1 will do? Now it will start from f of 3. Again, this f of 3 is going to exactly look like this f of 3, right? And you know that why. So this f of 3 will first print 3 according to this. And then this condition will be true and then this will also return right and after this what will happen once this has returned then the control goes to the parent and now again f of 1 has completely finished execution so you see this thing right that f of 1 i had said this basically is going to represent the output if the function call was invoked for x equals to 1 that has been done now once this is completely over then only this kicks in the same thing happened here also. Once this was completely over, then this kicked in. Once this was completely over, then this kicked in. You understand the correlation, right? Now again, at the level of f of 2, can I say that whatever is this thing will simply come over here? It will. You can try that out. For f of 2 again, the first thing it will do is it will print the value that is 2. And then this condition is false, so it will invoke f of 3. And then f of 4 will be on hold. Now again, f of 3, what will happen? It will print the value which is 3. Okay. And then this condition will be true. So this will return. Now again, it goes here. And again, it comes here. Prints 4, returns. And then again, control comes over here. f of 2 is over. So the control goes over here. Entire f of 0 is over. So that is how the control finishes. Order of output is very, very easy to understand. It is from left to right. So the first thing to be printed was 0 over here. Okay. And then everything of this will come up. In which fashion? Left to right again. So now 1 will come. And then for this, 2, then 3, then 4, then 3. And then I have 2, and then 3, and then again 4. So the output that I have is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, and then 2, 3, and 4. That is what my output is. So this kind of thing is also called as recursion tree diagram. So given any kind of code snippet, you should be able to draw its recursion tree diagram and it is very easily just blindly follow the instructions and start with a root node and start creating these edges okay and you know what to execute first and what to execute later and just keep executing them and then you will be able to know how the right kind of output is coming up okay cool